What the hell is efficiency ratio? Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss efficiency ratio. I'm stealing from underwriting and finance to help you understand more financial terms. Maybe that helps you in your real estate journey. Maybe that helps you when you own your own business. It works on both ways. So today let's discuss efficiency ratio. This is a quick video just going through efficiency ratio. What is efficiency ratio and how can it help your business or your investments? Efficiency ratio is a term usually borrowed from finance and mostly from commercial under writing which discusses how much sales are you making on an annual basis based on your existing assets how much sales you make based on existing assets well what's the point of that part yeah what are you wasting our time with this well there is a good reason for this because it is in a way in the realm of ratios like cap rate and so on but not really but we'll tell you how you can relate them two together. So efficiency ratio says that your total assets for this company is this amount, your sales per year is this amount. And the question is this, based on the assets that you have in your possession, are you making enough sales? That means that how is your efficiency? It means that what is the efficiency of your current assets? For example, if you own a restaurant, you own a grill, convection ovens, a uh, nice little fridge, maybe a freezer, the walk-in freezers that you see uh, Gordon Ramsay walk into, um, a lot of those uh, nice little tables, the equipments at the bar, those soda guns or so on. I don't know if they're, they're assets or it's provided by a vendor, but you have all of those. You have all of those assets and um, they're there for you to make money from. The convection oven is there to cook food, to give to the customer so they can pay you money. The cash register is there for you to collect the money. So every asset in play is in a way used to make you money in terms of sales. So it is fair to evaluate the asset and say, well, how much sales is it generating? Are the assets in our disposal generating enough sales or there's something wrong? Again, efficiency ratios are evaluated in two ways. Obviously, one is benchmarking is that you want to see that based on the similar businesses with similar asset levels. Are you making enough sales based on the assets? And then trend analysis that how is your efficiency ratio over time? Are you increasing your efficiency ratio? Are you just not having luck with it? Meaning your efficiency ratios are the same or are lower which can be done in different ways is that if you have the same level of assets in play and then your sales are the same, their sales are stagnant, you're not going anywhere or that you have the same level of assets, but your sales are going down or that you are continuously increasing your assets, especially in more of those operational assets like the grill, the, the fryer, things like that. And uh, your sales are not increasing or are increasing not at the same rate as your assets are. Again, this is not always a reflection of the assets. It could be a factor of many different things, but for the sake of this ratio, we want to know exactly how much sales we can extract from the asset we have in hand. So that's basically efficiency ratio. Uh, we use it in underwriting as well uh, for small business loans and is that we want to know exactly all the assets that they have. Maybe they're good, but all those operational assets, are there assets that can help them make money? If that asset is not making them any money, well, then it's not the good asset that they have. So we don't have to just sleep on large number of assets they have. So in a situation where you have a business that has a high equity, high number of assets, low liability, they're really good but the fact is that their efficiency ratio is very low meaning that uh, their assets are not generating as enough sales well there's a problem and again sometimes happens when your assets are not operational or assets are not utilized to make money for example cash in the bank account if you have a cash in savings account or worse cash in the checking account just sitting there not making any money yes their assets their current assets their liquid assets the best type of assets in a way uh, because it's available to to spend to run your business but if you're not doing it anything with it, you can have high asset type, low utilization, a lot of cash sitting in a bank, they're not doing anything low value. And again, we're, we'll discuss time value of money and how our money is losing value as time goes on. So that's even worse. But for utilization is that your business has a lot of cash or a lot of assets or a nice little car parked in the back. But if it's not making you enough money, then it's not as efficient and there needs to be revisions on it. So that's the use case for a business. A business can have different efficiency ratios and you want it to have a very high efficiency ratio comparing to 
its peers to its competitors in the area and also average with everyone in the same industry because if it has a lower efficiency ratio suddenly there is an issue is that maybe their sales are not good maybe their assets are not uh, well utilized or they don't have the type of assets that they can utilize to make more money you can make more money off of a cash if you buy a gold watch for your business and just have it set on the counter as a display maybe it's not making enough money but if you buy another vehicle for if you use that cash to pay for marketing, use that cash to pay for customer outreach, well, then now you're increasing your efficiency ratio, which actually those kind of cash spent for operations, usually bumping the efficiency ratio up because you're lowering your assets a bit, but at the same time, you're increasing your sales. So there is a leveling off there that you can do for your business. Now we discussed business analytics long enough and small business analytics is is very exciting if you want to invest in real estate as we said if you have a strategy that is long-term hold and investing in real estate as a business just as we said in this video you want to think like a business owner as well and bring in some of these financial ratios that can help you get a better insight will that make you a better investor yes it makes you a more informed investor do you necessarily need it no you don't need anything you can just buy property, don't run the numbers, don't do any due diligence. Chances are you may be successful, you may be not. But it's better for you to know exactly what's going on in your business, which is your property that you're managing, that you're extracting income from, than not knowing it. Okay, now for real estate. Efficiency ratio can be used for real estate. It's not a ratio that real estate uses because things like cap rate and 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 you know your your net operating income things like that would help you and then the asset is closely tied to its income meaning the assets job is to make money with or without you you're just there to facilitate it have a business around it to make it more efficient make it happen make it operational but you can run it you can see that um your efficiency ratio is is very important your efficiency ratio is in a way a mirror to cap rate your cap rate is your NOI over value. Efficiency ratio is essentially the same thing. It's your revenue over your value. I would say efficiency ratio in real estate, we call it gross yield in a way because gross yield takes the annualized gross income and divide it by the value, whether it be a listing price, whether it be um, the price that you want to purchase a property. Ultimately, it'll be the price that you paid for the property. And um, that gives you the gross yield as well. Gross yield is a good measure. It's our version of efficiency ratio for real estate, which says, yes, regardless of our expenses, I still want to know that if the property produces enough revenue on an annual basis relative to its pricing, if you have a property that's not making much income, whether it's um, has some sort of a design or structural obsolescence or it needs a lot of work done in it or there's some uh, deferred maintenance things that can uh, stop it from earning the revenue that it deserves to earn and because of the hot market because of the market forces right now for example southwest florida is very hot and prices go up regardless market forces usually tend to trump income and expense for an investment property just because in this market it is very unbalanced you have a very low supply very high demand which we'll make a video on that and um those are have a higher causality to the purchase price which is we call it the value at this point than income and expense so this can give you indications of that kind of market when you see a property that doesn't have a high annualized revenue but at the same time you see that the price is really high because it's just um, highly sought after or a lot of investors want to buy it or it's just the market is too hot you know that yes you can buy this property but understand that if your purpose is to earn cash flow is to earn income is to earn revenue that is sustainable this might not be the time or the property for you so when we talk about efficiency ratio gross yield can be a close brother to it in real estate so uh, understand this ratio know that sometimes you have a lot of options when it comes to expenses for example you can eliminate property management or manage it yourself you can uh, lower some costs but at the same time one thing that you can't change and you can't change that easily is your annualized revenue in a year for residential properties you have once a year opportunity to increase the rents and it has to be reasonable it has to be the way that it doesn't put the tenant at a uh, disadvantage put the tenant under pressure and also that it's comparable to the increases in the market 
if the market rents going up three to four percent per year and you suddenly say that okay i'm going to buy this property and increase the revenue by 12 percent well no that's not going to work out because your property is not as attractive as other properties obviously if we're in southwest florida for example during this market yes it can get away with a lot of things does that mean it's right and sustainable and it'll stay with you for the next five or ten years because you're in this game long term the answer is still no so think about it this is a good ratio to know about it it really taps into that income production levels and this is a very simple ratio again it's a simple division but it gives you a ton of insight ton of insight that most commercial brokers don't even know about if you ask them about these things they don't know about it even though they have ccim designations that they paid a lot of money for they don't teach you that stuff so by you knowing that you're way ahead of them and last but not least in this market you want to be careful it's okay to look for properties that work for you so always make sure that you have a template and if you don't ask me free of charge i'll provide you one um, and then have that enter the information into it see what metrics you have see if it works for you then pull the trigger remember looking is always free you can always look always ask for financial information from a listing and if it works for you pull the trigger if it doesn't work for you don't pull the trigger if you feel like the market is too hot you can wait but you can still collect data collect information so be active be cautious and use finances to your advantage thank you so much for watching this video it's a lot of fun and as always if you have any questions ask me if you want to know about financial ratios like cap rate we have a video up there there is a good video on equity that we have right here and as always keep investing and keep learning see you next time